What's good, my people? What's good? Dev is back with another video, and today we'll be doing the playoff preview for the two versus seven seed in the Eastern Conference, which would be the Toronto Raptors in the two seed versus the Brooklyn Nets in the seven seed. And for the Brooklyn Nets to win a few games in the series or even come out uh, victorious in the series, they're going to need Karis LeVert, Joe Harris, and Jared Allen to really show out this series. That's the only way they're going to be able to do anything due to injuries and players not showing up to the bubble with their team. Uh, Kyrie Irving is still injured. Kevin Durant is still injured. Spencer Dinwiddie didn't show up to the, bu the bubble. Wilson Chandler, DeAndre Jordan, even uh, Prince didn't show up to the bubble for the Nets. So without them playing, they come out with a starting lineup of Jared Allen, Crew Roots, Joe Harris, Karis LeVert, and then Chris Chioza. And to stack that lineup against Fred Van Vliet, Kyle Lowry, Norman Powell, Pascal Siakam, and Marc Gasol, it's just a difference. The Nets, they averaged 111 points per game, and they gave up 112 points per game, both which is 18th in the league uh, for their team in those categories. While the Raptors averaged 112 points per game, which is 14th in the league, but they only gave up 106 points per game, which is first in the league. So this is going to be a defensive battle for the Raptors or a defensive really uh, showcase for them to even get back to the championship if that's what they're, I mean, well, that's uh, obviously what their end, end goal is. And with the injuries and the players not showing up for the Nets, I just don't see those them averaging that many points, especially without Dinwiddie. And then on the defensive side, I see them giving up more points without DeAndre Aiden. The Raptors and the Nets played four times this year. The first time was early in the season where the Raptors won 110 to 102. The second game, the Raptors didn't have no Siakam. They didn't have Norman Powell. They didn't have Mark Gasol. And they blew out the Nets 121 to 102. The third game was the closest game of the series. It was a 119 to 10 or 118 game where the Raptors won. But Karis LeVert dropped his uh, career high at points at that time with 37. He went six for seven from from deep. It's just uh, the Raptors had the last possession of the play and they are the last possession of the game and they won on the game winner. And then the fourth game was right before the All Star break, where the Nets actually won that last game, one hundred one to ninety one, and it really and it snapped the fifteen game winning streak by the Raptors. Now what's scary about the Raptors is last year they lost the top five player in the league. And Kawhi, or this year they lost the top five player in the league in Kawhi, but their record is similar to last year's. Last year they were 58 and 24. This year they're 52 and 19. 11, uh, it's 11 less games due to the coronavirus and shutting down or shortening the NBA season. But uh, if you average that out, there it's the same average of wins and losses really. Uh, and that's two years in a row that the Raptors have been in the second seed in the East. And without Kawhi, it allowed younger players or uh, younger players than Kawhi to actually get the ball and show why they they carried that team to the second seed without Kawhi playing uh, a decent amount of games for the Raptors last year. Fred Van Vliet is averaging 17 and 6. Kyle Lowry is averaging 19, 5 rebounds and 7 assists. Norman Powell has upped his career uh, average or upped his career or upped his points per game this year to 16.4 or 16.4 and then Norman Powell with 22 points a game seven rebounds and four assists and then Marc Gasol is averaging seven points and six rebounds last year he didn't average that much either because he's just that defensive anchor that the Raptors need him to be and that leader or that that person that's been there to let the the younger the youngins know what the what to do and where to be at position wise now it's two key players that the Nets are going to need to absolutely show out for them to have a chance in this series and that's Karis LeVert who averages 18 points a game and in the matchups against the Raptors this year his matchup against uh, Van Vliet he's it's a really it's a mismatch he's seven for eight from uh, the field when he's guarded up against uh, Van Vliet so I see the Brooklyn Nets trying to orchestrate plays to get that matchup to happen for them but with OG uh, with Kyle Lowry with Siakam and Hollis Jefferson, I think with those six players, they'll be able to switch up the matchups on him, give him different looks, and try to confuse him. But he's going to have to absolutely show out and, and show why he, he can be that third option for the Nets once Kyrie and Kevin Durant come back. 
The second player that absolutely needs to show out for the Nets will be Joe Harris. He's a free agent at the end of the season, and he will be a, a, a free agent that a lot of teams will go after just because he can shoot from deep. He's a marksman from back there. 40, shooting 42% from behind the arc, and he's the or it's only three players averaging more points per game than him coming off of screens. So he moves without the ball extremely well. And he's a, actually a pretty good defender. So he had that task of guarding Van Vliet or Kyle Lowry. And I think he'll be able to show some things. Now I have this series going six games. Or yeah, I have this series going six games. And it'll be a 4-2 win or a victory by the Raptors. And the main reason why I have this as 4-2 Raptors is because of Pascal Siakam. And the matchup that he's going to be able to go up against. And Crew Roots. Crew Roots is a... Uh, is a foreign player that really isn't uh, quick on his feet. And the the Nets don't really have anybody else to guard uh, Pascal Siakam other than Crew Roots. And with that being said, Pascal Siakam is faster than him. Uh, he's uh, more athletic than him. He's a way better player at this point. And uh, throughout the rest of their career, I feel like Pascal will be the better player. And that's a key reason really why I have this series going 4-2. And also, Pascal needs to set the tone for the rest of the league and let them know, let them know that he has a completely arrived and he's not just a fluke player or a good player during a regular regular season. Now let's get into the benches of both teams, and then after that we'll get into the head coaches, and then we'll end the video after that. So to start with the Nets, they only can go about eight deep. They just picked up a, a player, the probably the best player on their bench after all of those injuries, and in Jamal Crawford off the street. And in the one game he played, he scored five points and three assists. Then another player on their bench is Justin Anderson, who we shouldn't talk too much about. He averages two points and two rebounds. And then their big man off the bench is Nicholas Claxton, who averages four points and three rebounds. But when you look at the Raptors, matter of fact, now that I'm looking at the Raptors bench, I'm going to change my prediction to 4-1 Raptors. And this, game, this series will only go about five games. Um, OG is averaging 10 points and five rebounds. Terrence Davis, who is an undrafted rookie that's really, really, really good in this league. He averages seven points, three rebounds. Hollis Jefferson, who is a defensive wing for the Raptors, who averages seven points, five rebounds. Serge Ibaka, who's a starter for a majority of teams in the league, but the Raptors have the luxury of making him come off the bench, and he averages 15 points and eight rebounds. And then once you look at the Raptors head coach compared to the uh, Nets head coach, it's a huge difference. Nick Nurse is up for coach of the year, which I think he deserves it. Uh, his playoff record is 24 and 16. And just last year, he won the NBA Finals. And when you compare that to Jock Vaughn, who is just the interim head coach for the Nets until next season, where I think they'll look for our, another high profile coach to lead the charge for Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Uh, it's just, it's, it's not, it's not even close. Go ahead down in the comments. Let me know who you think will, uh, win this series, what you think the series will end at. Like I said, tell me who you think will be in the finals. Um, while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe to my boy Jackson's channel. Hit that sub to my channel at Break It Down Dev. And yes, Sursky, that's another one. Have a blessed day.